Welcome everyone, happy new week. This is the week where we are getting season one of Dragonflight to start. In just a few days, a couple, three days, we are getting season one, we are getting Mythic Plus open, we are getting the raid open, as well as rated arenas and battlegrounds, but who cares about that? We are here to talk about PvE, and we are here to have an update on what we checked last week. So, at the release of the expansion, curious about what players were playing, what were the choices of the players when it came to the specs in the game, in anticipation for the release of the season, we went and looked at things like these. We went and looked at how many players were playing each and every spec. We put a threshold, we were only looking at players above 365 item level because we wanted to know if you didn't just level one up just for leveling it, you know, if you were playing it casually, if that was your character to do to do pet battles, to do achievement hunting and open world questing, but if you were actually trying to, to you know, to build it up to be played for the release of the season. So it's been a week. We have gotten a much higher item level. We've gotten more time to play the game over time for multiple players, multiple types of players, depending on how much time you have to spend in the game. So we are, I think, in a good situation to have an update on this. This time we are upping the threshold from 365 as a minimum to 375 as a minimum. Because I believe, I'm not sure about you, but I believe that if you brought a character up to 375 item level, it means that you have done Mythic Zero back to back over two weeks, you have farmed all of the rares giving you up to 369 item level, and then the super rares giving you all the way up to 382 item level you have farmed things like the obsidian grind to get the, the necklace or the cloak perhaps you have also farmed a certain faction to 25 renown so you get a 389 piece of gear plus a primal infusion to craft a 405 item level piece of gear as well as primal matrices to get a 382 piece of gear etc etc so i think that if, if you put that much time into a character it's probably because those are players planning on playing mythic plus quite a bit or raiding quite a bit etc etc so it would show that these are the characters that the players have in mind for playing as soon as the season launches so Let's just start with the healers first. When it comes to healers, we still have at the bottom, yes, indeed, we still have Resto Shaman. They went from 6.8% of the player base though to 9.1, so there is a 33% increase, one third more Shaman players now available in the healing pool. After that, we still have no change in the ranking of players in the sense that Mistweaver is also there still, and the change in the player base is also not massive. It's a 5% overall change from 10.1 to 9.6, so we are still not seeing too much in terms of changes in the negative. It is all cancelled as we now jump into the priests, because both Holy and Discipline are losing quite a lot. Holy Priest is played 17% less of the times, and Discipline Priest is played a whooping 27% less uh, time compared to last week, and compared to how many priests exactly are there at 375 plus item level. So perhaps all of those priests that went missing along the way simply weren't planning on playing at a decently ish high level at the release of the season perhaps they got lucky with loot at the start and now they got unlucky either way there has been quite a decent drop for both of these specs as a result there has also been an increase a significant increase for holy paladin which previously was below both of the priest specs at 11.8 percent of all healers and now it's at 14.2 a 20 percent increase compared to last week and compared while having 10 more item levels no surprises at the top as we have already seen the other five healers so what's left is resto druid and preservation evoker druid has a slight increase of five percent and evoker as well also has a slight increase of four percent so overall they keep their advantages compared to before if anything now the gap is even larger because previously third place was discipline which lost quite a lot so Overall, if anything, the two top healers, the, the healers that seem to be the top healers for Season 1, become even more clearly the more played across all healers. Then, when we move to tanks, this was last week's list of played tanks above 365 item level. The surprise part was that Blood Death Knight was still holding on quite well. Since if you went around and listened to talks about potentially OP tanks, you heard quite a lot about Prot Warrior, you probably also heard quite a bit about Vengeance and maybe even about Guardian Druid. Not nearly as much, however, the talk about Blood Decay. So we start 
at the bottom with the two specs which are still at the bottom brewmaster and protection paladin the change is that even more depressingly brewmaster is less played than last week at the very least while protection paladin is still at the bottom they are played 20 percent more than last week so as a consolation prize you have that uh, protection paladins after those two at the bottom quite clearly uh, below everyone else you have guardian druid which still remains the fourth played tank compared to last week better than before rising compared to before still not closing the gap to the top three this is where we get our first change in fact we do have a full swap because the first gets second the second becomes third and the third becomes first Blood Death Knight, previously second, loses 7% of player base overall and goes into third place, while at the same time, Vengeance Demon Hunter, previously first, loses 13% of players overall and goes in second place, and Protection Warrior, third place previously, now gains 12% more characters above item level 375 and parks itself in first place when it comes to played tanks. This is right before, basically right before, or rather right as the nerf to tanks is happening, and also the second nerf, the extra nerf to Vengeance Demon Hunter is happening as well. So maybe some Vengeance Demon Hunter tanks just instantly swapped to Havoc in Desperation or in, in Strike of the nerfs, but either way, this has currently made Protection Warrior the most played of the tanks when it comes to high-end item level compared to what we had last week. Then we move, we move on to melee DPS. So we can immediately make things fast by pointing out that compared to last week, Survival Hunter, Subtlety Rogue, Arms Warrior and Assassination Rogue aren't really changing. They are still being played less than anyone else and not really having that much of a change. So we can already just remove them from the bat as, as no change is happening to them. Funnily enough, two of these specs have just gotten nerfed because Subtlety and Assassination both got uh, nerfed. But besides that, we can move past these bottom four. We enter the realm of Frost DK and Feral Druid, which lose out just a tiny bit, like very, very small compared to last week. They still stay on the right side of the list on the bottom eight-ish specs. So not many changes there. Where we do see a bit more change is as we go higher and higher because first we have enhancement which was previously on the left side it was previously in the top five now instead ends up even outside of the top six it finishes seventh with an 11 percent drop compared to last week so who is increasing who is getting much higher partially a little bit is unholy because they go from 6.4 to 7.1 they increase by 11 percent in their player base that is okay it's a decent increase where we do get the massive increase is the change from 5.8% of all melee DPS specs above 375 item level to 7.5%. That is Red Paladin, which increases by 30% compared to last week. Once again, at pretty much all ages, all stages of the game, Red Paladin remains a very popular spec, no matter if it's very weak, very often, or extremely powerful, almost never. It doesn't change. It still remains a popular spec. After this, we have the top four. The top four is still, of course, the same four specs, but they have swapped around a tiny bit. It's not nearly as big of a switcheroo we just saw with tanks, but there is a change. So, first place, first of all, is Windwalker. It's not Outlaw anymore. Windwalker loses 9% of the player base overall compared to last week, and in return, Outlaw jumps into third place with a plus five percent the biggest change however is the fact that there is no change in the top two havoc demon hunter is still the same at the top barely any change minus two percent compared to last week really really small as i said the biggest change is the the no change in fury because last time we checked this i was surprised by the player base of fury because much like when we talked about the tanks and if you ever heard people talking about or discussion about the powerful tanks you heard about two or three of them but rarely you heard about blood death knight yet they were very popular the discussion for melee was very similar you might have heard about havoc you might have heard about windwalker you might have heard about outlaw maybe even about enhancement but probably not as much about fury yet they remain very popular in fact compared to last week they even increase in a player base plus six percent 
when going from 365 item level last week to 375 item level this week so overall the main change of course is the massive growth out of nowhere of red paladin and the change in ranking between outlaw and windwalker but still being quite clearly as you can see by the gap of numbers the top four is quite clearly ahead compared to the other specs down below after this we have range dps range dps which were left for last because they have the biggest amount of changes the more surprising ones as well so Talking about the biggest amount of changes, we can just skip past Fire Mage and then Affliction Warlock and then Destruction Warlock because they are not really changing. So let's just take them out of the way. The player base is roughly the same compared to last week. The changes start immediately though right after because both Elemental and Frost Mage lose significantly compared to last week. Elemental is now played 27% less compared to last week and Frost Mage is played 15% less compared to last week what is the biggest change of the week out of all of the specs all of the classes both this week and last week the biggest change is to marksmanship hunter marksmanship hunter goes from 3.2 percent of ranged players playing marksmanship to eight percent this is an increase of 150 percent players clearly the largest of changes which of course will also cause a domino effect to the other hunter spec in this list which we will see in a bit given this massive growth of players to marksmanship after them however the changes aren't done because while shadow priest doesn't change massively just a tiny minus six percent compared to last week there is another very big change which is arcane that we haven't mentioned yet arcane increases by almost a third of the player base compared to last week there has been as we pointed out a loss of players in frost mages and we have found a few more when it comes to arcane talking about changes in players there is a change also to balanced druid balanced druid still was a bit behind the top three last week now they are even further back because they lose 12 percent overall of their players when looking at above 375 item level the top three is now much more fought after not for devastation evoker which basically does not change whatsoever they are basically still at that percentage of players the real fight is now for the top two because demonology increases by 15 percent compared to last week but at the same time as we mentioned after maximship hunters growing by 150 percent we have a loss of 25% of players for Beast Mastery. So Beast Mastery goes from 21.8% of all ranged players playing BM to 16.6, tying almost precisely down to the last number, tying with Demonology Warlock at the top of the range DPS. So clear, clear of course divide between marksmanship players likely because of the buffs they just received, 10% increase to all of their damage and even some extra AOE bonuses in damage. So probably that's why we had so many players suddenly jumping back to marksmanship after moving to Beast Mastery for the release of this expansion, as well as more and more hopium being consumed when talking about Arcane Mage. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting to see if all of this hope is going to actually end up being worth uh, believing in because now Arcane is into the top five, challenging Balanced Druid for top four, which is quite the rare sight for a spec like Arcane, which we do not often see to be quite popular overall. So interesting look for Arcane Mage. Now with the range DPS done, these were all of the changes we could see in terms of player base for the release of the season. I think this is quite an interesting thing you can look for when trying to look at the meta, the playable specs, the popular specs you will see in just a couple of days because we don't have nearly enough data, nearly enough ways to understand who is going to be powerful from a numbers perspective. Look at this. This is the dear, old, and usually very, very trustworthy simulation craft. And this is what they currently have available almost two weeks into the expansion. You know, this type of, this type of scarcity of, of simulations is what you would have expected about three months before the release of the expansion. Definitely not two weeks into the expansion. So with this much lack of data, it's quite interesting to try to look at it from a different point of view, which is just looking at how many characters are being played at a pretty high item level, meaning they are planning on playing them quite soon in the season. And this is what we have as a result. 
we will see just how much of this is going to end up respecting and reflecting the meta just because beast mastery is the most popular of the players right now doesn't mean it will be meta just like just because fury is much more played than windwalker doesn't mean that fury will be more popular than windwalker for example it's still good to see in general what is the player base at the very least leaning towards for the moment so with this out of the way we can now leave each other to the rest of the start of this week we can start as usual by thanking all of my patreon supporters for contributing and supporting myself and this channel you can still support of course in other way that don't include having to go and take away money from your personal favorite e-girl simp fund which is liking and commenting down below as well as subscribing to the channel itself lastly you can follow me on twitter you can subscribe to my uh, patreon to get access to my discord server as well and i am also streaming nowadays on twitch generally from 10 p.m european time zones 1 p.m pacific and 4 p.m eastern us time zones as well that's where you will find me too with this out of the way thank you guys again for watching see you guys soon and in the meantime i had a rare attack of a, of a 12 hours long cold which destroyed my nose now it's gone and i hope it stays that way please